the Minecraft Village, one of the most beloved and useful features during the early game, home to the lovable and sometimes infuriating villager, has received many updates over the years since the first Plains Village was added back in Beta 1.8 all the way to the 1.14 Village and Pillage update, we've seen a lot of improvements over the years. But it's not enough. That's why I've decided I'm going to construct my very own village on this plot of land right here, including all 13 of the villager professions. Ladies and gentlemen of the internet, the plan is simple. This plains biome you see before you that's surrounded all the way around by desert is what I'm going to transform into what I'd like the vanilla Minecraft villages to look like in the game. And if you're new to my Let's Play series here, this is actually the 35th part of the series, and normally we're working on my massive kingdom over here of Ventia. But for the next few episodes, I figured, you know what, let's tackle a village project. And so if you're going to build yourself a village, the first thing you're going to have to consider is, of course, the location. Location. And personally, I would have loved to build this right on top of a vanilla village, but unfortunately, there weren't any vanilla plains villages very close to my kingdom I'm building over here by spawn. And I wanted it to be close enough that we could build a road going all the way over here from Ventia and not have that take forever and ever. But to have a village, we're going to need villagers. And where are we going to get them? Well, in the desert here surrounding our plains oasis. I've got a couple of these desert villages. There's one over here, and then there's one that actually has two blacksmiths. Yes, good folks, the rare and coveted double blacksmith village over here. And so in preparation for this video, I grabbed myself a few of these villagers from this village over here and boated them all the way through the ocean, across the sea right here, and all the way through the winding river that splits the desert in two. Coming around to our plains biome right here, and now I have myself three little villagers. And so what I'm going to do is create a villager breeder with these guys so we can populate our village. But before we get any of that done, we normally initiate these episodes episodes with an intro time lapse and today's going to be no exception we have all these variations in the terrain and these mini puddles that i need to fill in so without any further ado let's get this area ready for some building let's roll that time lapse oh yeah and in this one, ladies and gentlemen, my mission was to eliminate all these small inconsistencies. All the little puddles and ditches and cave entrances got filled in, and I made sure to light everything up very rigorously. Because personally, I'm used to working in a mushroom biome where nothing spawns, but here we're going to have villagers, and therefore making sure the area's mob-proof is going to be our top priority. Safety first, everybody. And obviously we're going to do a lot more terraforming in this area once we get each structure in. But just getting a bit of base landscaping in like this can make your area look a lot better right off the bat. So now that our area is ready to go, let's get back in a first person and get to building. So I will see you on the other side. Now that the area is looking a lot better, we need a villager breeder because otherwise we're not going to be able to populate our village over here. And I have the perfect idea for this, I think. Villager breeders take up a lot of space and we don't want it to be visible here in the town. So I was thinking we just dig into this hill right here and build it right under it. This way, it's going to be super easy when we need to ship our villagers into their houses. So I'm going to have to dig out a sufficient area here and then we're going to start building logical geek boys design of a villager breeder. I have done some digging and the OCD players out there are going to be very happy about the fact that I replaced all the walls with stone and of course we got the dirt down here since we're going to be using this as farmland and now what we need to do is make a collection area for these guys when they actually breed. Okay so I've added a few things and here's how this is going to work. The villagers are going to farm the carrots over here then the baby villagers are going to come over here and they're going to want to run to the beds right here and they're going to fall through these traps doors into this water. What will then happen is the villagers get brought over by the water onto this wall right here. So they'll be half a block taller than what they're standing on. And then that means when the villagers grow up, this water block right here is going to take them all the way over here to this corner. And so before we create our villager grabbing system, I think we got to make sure we actually breed some. And for that to happen, we are going to have to turn this into farmland right here. And the strategy is simple. Let's just make sure they can't jump on the farmland by placing this down right here. And that should make sure all the soil in the area here gets hydrated. And so we're just going to put down as many carrots as we can fit in here. Excellent. Now what we need to do is bring in the villagers. So I put these trap doors. Let's actually hope that that makes sure the water doesn't spread. Okay, excellent. And then we just bring our villager in here and make sure we don't hit him when we break the boat. And oh, of course, he's going to be able to escape. That is
is not good. Don't you want a job, buddy? Come on, pick up the job. Let's bring over villager number two and hope he's a little bit more enthusiastic about agriculture. Oh, it seems he is. Mm, I don't have the wheat or the emeralds to trade with this guy, though, so maybe we'll just replace this. Ah, carrots. Excellent. That we can do. All right, we'll lock you in as a farmer. And you know what? Maybe we'll speed up this process a little bit more by giving them a few more carrots just to make sure the system's working here. And then we'll make sure these guys don't. It's ooh. oh, my goodness. You made a baby villager, even though I made a mess over here. So I got to go fix this real quick. Let's make sure this guy doesn't escape. No. But with some luck, this guy's going to make his way over there. Don't be afraid to flee the nest, buddy. Leave your parents behind. OK, now we got to make a collection system. And I did check where we come out. It should be right here. So let's break into our little holding cell. Ah, and there he is. It's working perfectly. So here's what I've done, ladies and gentlemen. Down this ladder, we get to the little collection station for our villagers. And ooh, our first guy actually grew up. And later in the episode, we're going to grab this guy with a minecart and ship him over to the farmhouse. But we also have this little path to see how many guys we've got so far. Ooh, we just had one come in. All right. So it looks like our breeder's really working, which is fantastic. But guys, I think it's time we get to some building. All right, guys, the first thing you're going to want to choose when you start building your village is, of course, the style and the block palette you're going to be using. And so personally, I'm going to need a lot of oak wood and cobblestone because that's what they use in the standard Plains villages. I am going to use a few blocks that aren't in the original palette of the Plains village because this is an upgrade. Remember, it's not just supposed to be a replica, but I'm going to try to stay as faithful as possible, which honestly is going to be super difficult because I kind of hate the original block palette for the Plains village. And I think that's going to be the most fun part of the challenge. Can I make an awesome looking village with a block palette that I totally hate? So now I need to choose where I want to put this house. And I think I want to make all this land in the back here farmland. So we're going to build it somewhere around where I put these shulker boxes. How about right here? And the inspiration I used for this house is this rectangular two-story house with cobblestone and uh, oak. And so we're going to see how we can improve this house. And to start with here, I've made it a little bit bigger. And I'm going to do the exact same thing that the Mojang team did. And we're going to start off by staying really, really faithful to Mojang's style here by building a big rectangle right here. And I've gone seven blocks by 11 here, if you want to follow along. And I've made it four blocks tall so that we can fit three blocks of cobblestone right here. And to be completely honest, I already hate this. Like, I can't stand the way this looks, the oak logs with the cobblestone. So the first change we're going to make is to add some andesite right here. And we're going to mix in a generous amount of this stuff. Yeah, I'm already feeling a lot better about this. Sleepy, sleepy, sleep the night away if it lets me, yeah. And so next up, we're going to do something that you've seen all your favorite Minecraft builders do, and that is extend the house out a little bit here so that the upper floor is larger and wider than the lower floor. This was a thing they did back in the day just to give more living space on the top floor and also maximizing street space. OK, beautiful. I think we want to focus on the short sides here before we do anything with the long sides, because I think we want to do a lot of detailing here on these sides. So how about we go one, two, three, four, four? five and then we'll bring this over we'll do the same thing over here and we'll also bring these across and now here at the top we'll go one one two one two three just to create our a-frame and to make it just a little bit more interesting looking we will strip every other one and we're going to do the same for the walls down here later too and so we'll just fill this whole thing in with oak for now and then we will strip it all up because this is another thing i want to change in the original palette this is oak planks but i just really hate the way oak planks look. I don't know why. And the stripped oak log has the exact same color, just a nicer texture to work with. And as you can see, guys, I haven't brought the wall all the way out, so it's actually not going to maximize the living space in there whatsoever. But this gives a little bit more depth to the build and some more space for us to work with. And just to round that out a little bit more, we'll add a couple of trap doors right there. Perfect. I think we've already made tons of improvements. Next up, we'll put some windows in right here. And the last thing I want to change is adding some shutters here to the windows. And I'm going to use some jungle trapdoors. Originally, I wanted to use warped trapdoors, but I think that would be deviating from the original Plains Village too much using nether materials. But I think the pinkish hue of the jungle stands out a lot, so that looks really good, to be honest. I'll do the same thing on the other side and be right back with you guys. Oh, and I guess it bears mentioning that I always use white glass panes or light gray instead of the normal ones. For medieval builds, I think the standard glass just looks a little bit too clean, so using white or light gray just makes it look a lot better. And I think we want to start working on the roof 
roof next, but before I do that, I'm just gonna fill in these walls. We're gonna change these a lot, but let's just get them filled in for now. Now that we've got that in place, let's move on to the roof. And if you remember from the original house, the entire roof was just oak stairs, but the reason that looks so bad is because it doesn't have a trim in a different color. So I'm gonna introduce spruce stairs to the build as our trim, and I think this should improve it a lot. And one thing they actually do in the villages now that they didn't used to back in the day is that the trims actually come outside of the house like this, which to me makes all the difference in the world to make your build look good. And in Ventia, you've usually seen me go up two blocks for every stair, but for now, we're just gonna go with one because in this village, we're gonna have tons of villagers, so we can't have mob spawns on the roof. So we're just gonna fill all this in with some oak stairs. Even though I'm not that big a fan of the oak planks texture, I think it's a bit better with stairs. And if we didn't keep some oak on the roof here, it really wouldn't be faithful to the original design. And to continue our mob proofing streak here, we'll use some slabs just to top this roof off. And now, as you can see, we have something really close to the original house, but a bit bigger and upgraded. I really like this. But the transformation doesn't end here, good people. We have to worry about the sides here that are looking pretty empty at the moment. And this side here is going to be the front side facing the village. So first off, we're going to need an entrance, and I'm going to give you guys a really neat little design that I use all the time. And you just leave these two blocks in the corners, put one slab up there, and a few walls like this. And then we need to create some kind of frame for the door right here. Put our door in, and we've got something that looks pretty good. But that's not all I want to add here. In fact, we got to do something grander for the entrance. And then we can bring this out another block just to get some more space up there. And I'm thinking we bring this up to the same height as up there, just to make things a little easier. And right here, I think we want to do the same thing where we keep this open for business, and we'll start our line here one block backwards. Add ourselves a little window, and voila! And now we just have to continue the roof up onto here. And I'm just gonna connect these two right here with another spruce stair. And then we'll just bring all this together with the oak. Okay, we're getting there, we're getting there for sure. There we go, now we can call it finished. I added a couple windows here on the sides with the jungle trapdoor accents, which I think is looking really, really good. And I'd say this part is actually done for now. And now for the back side here, we're gonna have it looking out over the field. So we probably want kind of a big bay window here. So I'm just gonna extend this out just a little bit, one block in from the edge here, as you can see. And we're gonna bring this stone part out as well. I'm just gonna match all this to make it easier not to have to texture it again. And so here, I think I'll do the same entryway for the back. Beautiful, now I think we want some kind of terrace here in front underneath the big window. So we're gonna extend this up a little bit. This is gonna give us a lot more space for the interior as well. So we're just gonna bring this up. In fact, let's actually go one lower than the roof. And so I think I'm gonna make a three wide window here. So we'll do something like this, stripes once again. And I've been loving using this design of white, 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 light gray, light gray, light gray, just for some texturing in the window as well. And we gotta knock that wall out in the back as well. All right, this is all well and good, but we're gonna have to connect it up to the roof. So I hope I have some spruce slabs, yes indeed. And I'm just gonna bring these along the top edge and I think we'll do a bottom slab right there. And just so that we make sure these aren't spawnable, I think we'll go trap doors on top. We're not gonna do it for the edge one just to get a little bit more of a slope, but we are gonna put lanterns below here. So that should light it up. And we're just gonna do oak slabs, like a so, and then bring some up here. These top ones are gonna be spawnable though. So let's maybe try doing something like this. We'll make bottom slabs and then we'll do trap doors in between. I like that and now we're not spawnable. Okay, I'm really liking this. So let's try to make this little overhang with some campfires here. Yeah, now it just looks like we're burning down our house. That's not what we want. Now we have our overhang. I think we'll just bring it down by doing something like this. Probably just hide all these bottom textures with some trap doors. How about that? I think that's gonna look super duper awesome when it's looking out over all the big fields we're gonna build here pretty soon. So now we just need to add the final details, the first of which is gonna be a chimney. Cover up our campfire in trap doors here, and that should look pretty good. And then the very last thing I wanna add here are just some plants, because we got a lot of wood in this build so far, so bringing in a bit of color is never gonna hurt. Now we're talking, that's a lot better. It appears that our villager breeder's been churning out villagers like crazy. In fact, so many that two of them somehow have escaped? I, I honestly have no clue how this happened. 
But I trapped both of these guys in boats, so we can probably use them as our farmers later on. But our farmers are going to need some farmland, and this section right here seems pretty perfect to build it, so I'm going to have to gather myself tons and tons of carrots, potatoes, and seeds. But for you guys, this just means rolling the time lapse of me building the farmland. So without any further ado, let's roll that time lapse. Oh yeah. You know, there really are very few things that are as satisfying as building massive crop fields in Minecraft. And so since I had the opportunity here to make some, I decided to go all out. And the way I usually like to do my giga crop fields is outlining them with some leaves. This time I decided to use some spruce leaves and spruce them up by mixing in some other leaves as well. And honestly, since I'm putting myself on a pretty tight schedule with these videos, I didn't have time to make as many fields as I wanted to. I got four done in this one, but I think I want to enclose the entire town in these crop fields. That way I think we'll really accentuate that oasis feeling that I really want to go for in this plains biome that's right in the middle of all this desert. But guys, I don't think you understand how many seeds and potatoes and carrots that I actually went through. It took me around a shulker box and a half of wheat seeds alone, so I had to go harvest my mega wheat farm over in Venthia just to collect those. And while the potato and carrot farms weren't as big, it took me a good like 15 stacks each. And so it's safe to say that this crop field building process was the most time consuming thing I did in this video. And so if you appreciate me putting all this effort into this video and upping my upload frequency just for you guys, consider leaving me a like because I'd really appreciate it. And if you're new here and you're enjoying this video, you should really consider subscribing too because I upload very consistently. So I'd say that it's a pretty good deal. But now that I'm done promoting myself a little bit there, you can see that the wheat in the first field I planted is partially grown up. And I really wish that there was a way in survival to keep some of the wheat in early stages of growth because it looks so amazing when you've got some of the yellow mixed in with all the greens. But alas, that is not the case. Like, I'm super excited for all the new greenery that we're getting in the 1.17 update, but honestly, I want the farming update. More crops, make it so that all foods don't do the same thing. But anyway, getting back to what we're seeing on screen here, I decided to go with the path block for a path instead of stone or coarse dirt or something, because that's what they use in the vanilla villages, so that's what we're gonna use as well. Even though I'm not too big a fan of the path block, what I did to make Make it work in this instance is just add a ton of flowers when in doubt guys just spam flowers but let's add some more detail in first person i will see you on the other side all right ladies and gentlemen welcome back from the time lapse as you can see our farms are looking lovely over here and what do you guys think about the idea to cover the entire area and farms all the way around our village here could look really cool definitely let me know in the comments but what i've gone ahead and done behind the scenes is made an entire interior for the house here i also captured some horses because they were trampling my crops but before we take a look at the lovely interior we should actually have these villagers move in and this is going to be a pretty slow process, but I'm just going to boat them over. I've already placed the composters, so they should be more than happy to start farming. And we've got desert all around our plains here, so I think it's fine that these guys are desert villagers. I could go and grab the plains ones, but I think these guys are going to be totally okay. This is your new home, buddy. Come on, take the job. Ah, there we go. Nice. Welcome to your new home, good sir. What trade do you have? Ah, potatoes. That we can do. Lock you in as a farmer. Welcome, good sir. He's already doing some farming. It's working, guys. Now to grab our second escapee. All right, I'm going to set you free, buddy, but only if you take the job. Oh, yeah. There we go. Now, what do you have to trade? Ah, potatoes and carrots. That's actually pretty good. We will lock you in with a carrot trade. Excellent. Now, where'd the other guy go? Is he still farming? That is what we like to see, bringing some life into the village here. That's really awesome. Oh, yeah? You're walking away? You're going to judge me just like the viewers for having a massive shulker monster? All right, be that way, man. I seriously can't do a single build without making a mess like this. But guys, let's check out the interior here. Maybe these guys will check it out with me. We'll see. But we'll come in through the back door here. It, of course, leads to the same place as the front door and it's basically a little storage basement we have some plants we've got the beehives symbolizing some boxes we've got some actual chests this time i would use barrels but i couldn't use any of the villager profession blocks since that would kind of be breaking the rules here we only get to use the profession block that belongs to the actual villager we're building a house for and so here we have my two hoes the reaper of vegetation and the saplinator some people might be wondering why do i have two hoes one's for silk touching leaves and one is for gathering saplings 
things with fortune. I do a lot of tree farming. But guys, I used my netherite hoe and went through like half the durability when making the fields out there. So it's no joke making these giga fields. And if we decide to come upstairs here, we have the main living room. Am I the only one that feels like the oak plank texture together with the oak log feels super retro Minecraft? Either way, we've got this nice sort of 3D bookcase right here with a little hidden flower. And in the corners, we have some candle fodder for the new update as always on both sides here. And we get a really nice nice view of the wheat field from the bay window here. That's so awesome. I'm keeping an eye on you guys. I see they're already making a mess of things. Okay. And then if we go through this door here, we of course have the fireplace inside the kitchen here. And I would have used smokers and cauldrons and all kinds of decorational blocks, but that is again against the rules. So we had to go with just furnaces and these beehive boxes. I can't believe there isn't a beekeeper villager. They should add that. And then if we decide to go up the stairs here, I had to make this wall of trapdoors because otherwise I feel like the villagers would just hop down. This way, hopefully, they'll actually use the stairs. But then we've got one section with beds right here. I'm going to try to fit as many beds in this village as possible, so it's super bustling with villagers. And then on the other side, we have some more beds and just some storage for them to keep their clothes or whatever. And I kind of like having this loft being open in the middle here. It gives a really spacious feel downstairs. But yeah, that is the home of these villagers right here. But ladies and gentlemen, I think we've gotten a great head start start on the village project here. And if you're hyped for the coming episodes, definitely let me know in the comments and let me know what you'd like to see here in the village, aside from all the villager houses, of course. And you guys know how it is. If you stayed all the way to the end, then you're the champ and I appreciate your existence. And until we see each other next time, have a good one.